شهر الغفران يغفر ذنبي رحمن زدني من الإيمان يا رحمن So like many of you guys, I am very much looking forward to Ramadan and the sleepless nights that come along with it. Listen, I'm ready to ruin my sleep schedule for a few months after Ramadan. But of course, I have to start off with Bukhur in my room. This just sets a vibe for me, guys. I don't know what it is, just having the smoke burn out in my room. And then, you know, the aroma, it's just a vibe. So now, after the vibe is completely set in my room, I am going to be moving on to the first step, which is writing out all of my goals. Now, one thing that I've been doing for this Ramadan specifically is categorizing my goals into two different sections. So the first section being what I need to improve on, and the second being what I can implement. Now, one thing I've noticed myself doing consistently in different Ramadans is focusing so much on sunnah and different things that I can implement without actually improving the things that I already need to be working on. So in terms of maybe my salah, in terms of even mannerisms, you know, all the things that are already obligatory in Islam, it kind of takes a back seat and then we put the sunnah at a much higher priority. However, in Ramadan, I am trying to make it a priority to at least work on what I actually need to work on. And then after I do that, I can go ahead and implement things into my daily routine for Ramadan as well. For example, you can perhaps make it a goal to improve on your prayer. Maybe you're listening to horrible music, maybe you're backbiting, maybe you're doing, you know, XYZ. So many of these points we can try to improve on. And then when it comes to things we can add in, maybe it's praying sunnah. Or maybe I want to memorize an XYZ amount of Quran. Overall, it's definitely good to work on what is farad, what is obligatory for us before putting all of our focus towards something that is sunnah. Now, moving on to my second step for my Ramadan prep, it is my dua journal. Now, writing my duas down has been very transformative. One, because I'm really keeping track of the duas that Allah has already accepted. And subhanAllah, you will be surprised that so many blessings you're actually living through that you made dua for, you know. But it's nice to remind yourself of them, along with just having a list of all the things you want. So I definitely like to take the opportunity to write down every single dua my heart desires. Because listen, Allah tells us if we ask, he will respond. So that's all I need to hear. That's my confirmation to go crazy. Now, moving on to my third step is Quran prep. Now, in the previous years, I actually would prep my Quran by sectioning off every single juz so I can recite a juz per day. However, I'm not necessarily focusing on that this year. I do want to, however, focus on a few surahs, the tafsir, the meaning behind it, and inshallah gain as much benefit from that. My three surahs being Yusuf, Maryam, and Kahf. So hopefully that goes well for me. I find that after reading the passage, Listening to the tafsir directly after is a game changer for me because I'm able to now associate specific ayahs along with the different meaning and tafsir behind it. Now, I found an app. It's called Quran Hive and it's perfect for learning the tafsir behind the ayahs that you're memorizing, reviewing, or just randomly. It's by Norman Ali Khan and it is extremely in-depth. He literally translates every single ayah. Now, if you're somebody that doesn't want to use an app, it's definitely never a bad idea to go back to reading the actual book. I feel like it feels like you're studying a lot more, but these are the two books that I've learned a little bit of tafsir in, in the past, and it's very good. But this is a little bit of the glimpse from the Quran Hive app. This is what, this is what happens to kids that are disappointed to their family. They blame their failures on the sibling that doesn't have problems in their family. You always loved him more. That's why I'm a mass <laughs> so this by far is definitely one of my favorite apps to use for Quran Tafsir. It just makes it a lot more simple to understand. And by the way, he translates per ayah. So every single ayah that you select, every ayah you're memorizing, whatever it may be, select it. And he's going to give the Tafsir specifically on that ayah. So I just really love that a lot. But moving on to learning duas. Now, Ramadan is the month of beautiful, amazing duas that we hear so many times that we actually don't hear very often outside of Ramadan, right? 
task yourself or at least I'm tasking myself to memorize the meaning to these du'as so all those du'as that people cry in tarawih prayer for for example or something as simple as learning the du'a to break your fast something that you should be used, utilizing every single day right these are amazing du'as to understand the meaning behind so I definitely want to be a lot more intentional with the du'as that I make I want to be able to know that I am understanding exactly what is said by the way guys I know my Arabic ain't the best okay I'm trying but nonetheless when I write things down I feel like it sticks in my head a lot more versus me just reading it multiple times so tip number five would be to fill your day with lectures or nasheeds if you're anything like me TikTok and all of these, you know, Instagram shorts or reels, whatever it is, takes up so much of our time. Even videos on YouTube, honestly, that aren't the best of benefit for me. But if it sounds appealing, like the Risa Tisa situation, guys, listen, I'm guilty for listening to that whole thing. But you know, things like that, it's very easy to waste your time. And subhanAllah, this is the month where we really need to reap the barakah from every single moment. So in the smallest things I do throughout my day, whether I'm cleaning my room, or even just getting in my car, I'm trying to fill those times, those small gaps with listening to lectures. And if I'm wanting a break from lectures, I'll go ahead and listen to Anashid. Now, my fifth tip would be prayer, guys. So Sunnah prayer is definitely something that I want to increase in my Ramadan. I'm not somebody that prays Sunnah consistently for all of the prayers yet. Pray for me, inshallah, I will be. But Ramadan is definitely the time where I try to pray every single Sunnah to the best of my ability and then after that i also try to do dhikr after every single one of my prayers um subhanallah alhamdulillah la ilaha illallah allahu akbar you know those are heavy they're very light to say but they're very heavy on the scale filling your day with dhikr is such a game changer especially because it does not demand much from you at all i mean you can literally be doing things that you would already be doing whether you're grocery shopping walking to your car xyz Fill that time with dhikr, you know. It doesn't take away anything. If anything, it only increases you. And there are so many benefits to dhikr, guys. I'll leave a few links down below. There are so many benefits. Like, you're not losing. You're only gaining. So definitely try to implement that. I am definitely trying to implement it myself. But anyways, these are the tips that I'm going to be implementing myself to have a very good Ramadan and hopefully lasting effects outside of Ramadan as well. I hope this video was a benefit to you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon in the next one. Assalamualaikum.